My name is Tom Wolf. I'm the product application engineer for logic devices here at NXP Semiconductor. Today, we're going to talk about the lowly switch from its very beginnings at the mechanicals to today's modern analog switch. Switches are everywhere. They're not just controlling your room light and the dashboard in your car, but they're used in thousands and thousands of applications. Today, we're going to look at the state of the lowly switch and more importantly, its modern brother, the analog switch. So we're going to look at the evolution of the switch, some critical electrical parameters of switches, and more importantly, the design trade-offs. How do you pick one switch over another? In the beginning, there was the mechanical switch, and everybody's seen these. Set of electrical contacts, you apply mechanical motion with your finger or whatever type of machinery is moving that switch, electrical contacts are closed, and voila, a new circuit. Well, that's really useful, but once machines started coming around and computer controlled, you needed an electrical way to control those mechanical contacts, and hence the electromechanical relay, where an electric current caused a magnetic field, which caused mechanical contacts to close. So it was an electrically controlled switch. Very nice, very neat, but they get big. They have moving parts on them, so the industry was ready for something else, and the FET was born. Let's look at some of the standard switch configurations, though. You've got your average single pole single throw, single pole double throw. All it's telling you is the number of contacts and the number of positions that you can close them in. And there's a wide variety. Virtually any kind you need, there's probably a switch out there already. Now, there are critical parameters with it. You need to pick what is the configuration you want. How many contacts? How many ways do you want to switch them? How many volts is going through your switch? Is it 120 volts through the wall switch that's controlling the lights in your room, or is it very low voltage, low current? And finally, something called bandwidth. What is the frequency of the information passing through the switch? Is it DC? Is it AC current? Is it a video signal? All of these determine the proper type of switch that you should use for your application. Because of that, and because of the size and some of the problems with these large mechanical switches, the FET was developed, field effect transistor. So let's look at that and find out the advantages of going towards FET technology. Now this is a quick high-level diagram of what they are. On the left you have something called an N-channel FET, on the right is a P-channel FET. We're not going to get into too many details here, but it's essentially how you turn them on. An N-channel FET, if you apply a voltage lower than the source on the gate, it switches on. The P-channel is the opposite. If you put a voltage higher than the gate, then the FET will turn on. So there are two different ways of flipping the switch off and on, a high voltage or a low voltage. The real thing comes down to, though, which one is easier to manufacture. An N-channel is the cheapest to manufacture. A P-channel is more exotic and a little bit more difficult to manufacture. So what you'll find is that the vast majority of FETs in the market today are N-channel. Less expensive, a little more difficult to use, but that's where the market sits. So that takes us to some more switch critical parameters. When the switch contacts are closed, what is the resistance? How much force does it take for the current to flow through the switch contacts? What is the supply voltage? How many volts does it take to operate the switch? Obviously, there's some minimal amount. How do you set that amount? That determines what switch you use. And finally, something called the on-state capacitance. And we'll see that when we get in more into the FETs and the contacts themselves. But it's essentially how high of a frequency can the switch maintain? Is it only DC or can I go higher than that? Input voltage range, this is the range of the voltage that can go through the switch contacts. The time, how long does it take for the switch to turn on? How long does it take for it to turn off? The select pin levels, what kind of signals do I take to turn them off or on? And finally, the package size. So there's a lot of parameters in selecting the type of switch that you need. The best way to remember it is to remember that inside of it, there's a single device called a FET, no matter what the device is doing. For a lower resistance through the device, you want a bigger FET, but a bigger FET because it is a bigger physical device has higher capacitance. Higher capacitance means a lower bandwidth, less frequency that it can handle. A higher RDS on, a higher resistance, means you can have a smaller FET, which is lower capacitance, which is a higher bandwidth. And finally, if you want higher current, you need to put a very large FET on it. it gives me higher capacitance, but a slower turn on time. So it's always a trade-off. You can't have the best of everything, so you need to pick the switch based on the needs that you have. There is not a one size that fits all. So that takes us to the next stage of the evolution of the switch then. 
From a simple FET, we look at something called the analog switch. An analog switch is a series of FETs put together into a single package to simplify the design and make it smaller and more convenient. Now this is a list of the types of products that NXP makes. We build a wide variety of switches. They're all fundamentally the same. They're all fundamentally a FET inside, but they've each been tuned for a specific application. And we'll look at each one of those in turn. The first one is the general purpose switch, just like it sounds. They're not too fast, they're not too slow, they're not too expensive, they're not too inexpensive. They fit right in the middle and they're good for average applications. So the FET inside has been tuned for the smallest size, because that's the lowest cost, reasonably good resistant, reasonably good for frequency response, so they're good for general purpose. And they're very, very popular. They do a lot of things very well. However, sometimes you need to switch something very specific, like an audio signal. Audio signals are not very strong, so you need to have very low resistance so you don't lose the audio signal going through the switch. So the FET is tuned for a very low resistance and it is tuned so that the audio frequencies can pass through without being attenuated, without losing the signal as you go through. At the other end, you might want a video switch. Video is very high frequency, but you don't need to worry about the strength so much. So same concept, same type of configurations, but the FED has been tuned for high frequency response. The resistance may be slightly higher, but a video amplifier can solve that. So same physical structure, tuned for a different application. Bus switches are made specifically for data signals. So instead of tuning for low power audio signals or high frequency video, they're tuned for square waves, for digital signals passing at high frequency through switches into memory systems or networks. Again, same idea, but the FED has been tuned for the best propagation delay, the fastest, lowest resistance, and tuned for digital signal transmissions. A data switch is tuned for a very particular type of data. You've heard of USB or MHL or VGA. Each of these has a very specific requirement for the signals that pass through it. So we've tuned the FET specifically for those needs. All the voltages, all the protocol, all the signals are built right into the switch, so it's very simple to implement them. A load switch is a very specialized type of switch. It has been built for DC, very, very low frequency, very, very low resistance, so that it can pass very high currents. In fact, they're so specialized, we're going to cover them in another training module instead. But load switches, another type of analog switch. So in summary, take a look at the needs of the applications. All switches are similar, but each has been tuned for a very specific application. Understand the resistance, the capacitance, the voltage, and the features that you need, and it makes it easy to select the right analog switch. Switches are everywhere. Remember the characteristics. They will help you pick the right analog switch for your application. For more information, go to our website, www.nxp.com.